Okay, good afternoon, uh, Year 12 Psychologists. So, just going to start this video by uh, looking at the work that was due. So, just a reminder, um, the chat function um, has been disabled, which was explained before. Um, so, everything you know, in terms of our communication is happening in the Teams channel. So, please check the Teams channel regularly. Um, communication slipped up a little bit recently, so please, please do check that. Um, and a reminder around kind of submitting the 16 mark essays, uh, which I'm going to give feedback on, and you'll get those back next week. Um, we're looking at also psychopathology revision. Um, if you can keep on top of that revision, because you'll be doing an end of uh, topic test um, in about two weeks' time. So um, on Monday's work, I'll give you a specific date for that, but we want to keep on top of our revision for psychopathology. And of course, this week, um, our new topic is looking at the biological approach to treating OCD. We've looked at the biological explanation, okay, looking at um, neurotransmitters and uh, brain abnormalities. And this, uh, because of our biological approach, uh, we're also going to take a, bi uh, a biological approach to treating OCD. Um, and we're going to be looking at specific treatments for that. Um, I'd like you to make sure you write this kind of I, um, this six mark model answer. Okay, outline the biological approach to treating OCD, and towards the end of this video, I'll give you some tips and hints about how we can write really good answers for that. You've got a couple of optional tasks for you to do, and of course, we'll try and do the Q and A with um, most of you in school um, anyway on that uh, Friday tomorrow. Okay, so we'll get straight into the PowerPoint. So, treating OCD, taking a biological biological approach here, um, and we need to be able to uh, describe and evaluate the biological approach, that is, uh, drug treatment for OCD. Um, just to kick things off, it's a good chance to have a bit of a recap of what you did last week. Okay, so have a, have a little read through this, have a pause the video and see what you can remember about these key terms. So discuss how the biological approach explains OCD. Try and use the key terms below. Consider how the biological approach may try and treat OCD based on one or more of these assumptions. So pause the video, see if you can just off the top of your head recall an, an explanation, okay, a biological approach explanation for um, the instance of um, OCD. What can you remember about serotonin? What can you remember about dopamine? And what can you remember about the genetic explanations? Okay, have a go, try and recall it out loud. Okay. So pause the video, have a go. Okay, so of course we were looking at specific gene variants, the Compton the CERT gene, and looking at uh, serotonin and dopamine as neurotransmitters implicated in the instance of OCD. And in, in moving forward and thinking about the treatment for OCD, we can then start to think about, well, how can we target one of these areas? Okay. Very difficult to change someone's genetics, okay? Um, very difficult to, to carry out brain surgery if there are specific faults, and if those faults are there, it's going to be extremely difficult to correct those. Um, so what we're going to do then is think about drug treatments and how drugs and drug therapy can target neurotransmitters. We can alter the levels of serotonin and dopamine in the brains uh, of patients with OCD. So we're thinking about drug treatment specifically and how that interacts with specifically serotonin levels. We know that serotonin levels are, tend to be low okay, in our OCD patients and dopamine levels tend to be high in our OCD patients. We know that serotonin has a calming effect, an inhibitory effect on our behaviour. So if we have low serotonin, it can also lead to low mood as well. We know that that can lead to um, levels of, high levels of anxiety, which is uh, we know is, is implicated in OCD. Dopamine as well, we know we thought, talk about the reward pathway, we know that high levels of dopamine are often found in those with OCD, and that links to the reward pathway okay, um, of that OCD cycle okay, that we looked at last week. If we carry out those behaviours to deal with the, the um, Obsessions, yeah, we have our obsessions when we carry out the compulsions. Those compulsions, those behaviours will be even more rewarding in lowering those levels of anxiety if there are higher dopamine levels, and so that reinforces the behaviour. So what we need to try and do then is, is look at drug treatments to, to alter these um, levels of neurotransmitters and try to get these levels of neurotransmitters to a quote-unquote normal level. 
what we can do first of all, and this is um, okay, a bit of an exam question tip here. Okay, if you're going to write your six mark question for this, describing the biological approach to treating OCD, I would recommend that you know SSRIs really, really well. And you'll see from your booklets, it goes into quite a lot of detail um, about SSRIs, that is, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And I've known this really, really well. And the other two drugs that you were making notes on in your booklet, which I'm going to go through in this video, to have as a bit of a backup, okay, and have as like extra detail. Um, should you have some time to write in more detail. But SSRIs, you need to know really well and how they work. So I'm going to go through the key details, but you would have done your reading by now and made some further notes and annotations in your booklet by now. So here we go. We've got a lovely picture here of a um, synapse with our presynaptic and postsynaptic cells. And you can see here um, the process that we're going to try and explain and how these SSRIs work. So, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, for example, Prozac, that's a very common example, are commonly used drugs to treat anxiety through, uh, through OCD. Since low levels of serotonin may cause the brain's worry circuit to malfunction, it is thought increasing serotonin levels may normalise this circuit, in other words, to reduce the levels of anxiety. They work by blocking the reuptake of serotonin in the presynaptic membrane, where it is released from into the synapse. So let's take a closer look at this picture here. You can see my cursor. So this is our presynaptic cell. They start zooming, zooming, zooming right into brain structures within the brain in that worry circuit. And the new, the, this neurotransmitter, serotonin, has been released into the synapse. In this synapse here, then, in a patient with OCD, they would tend to have much lower concentration of serotonin being released into the synapse to have its calming effect on the worry circuit. Here then, by using SSRIs, which is um, represented with these shapes here, they block the reuptake process. Now in doing that, we have more serotonin then staying in the synapse and having its effect, okay? Increasing its concentration, blocking that reuptake to increase the concentration in the synapse and to have a, a longer lasting effect or an increased effect. So this increases the serotonin concentration at the receptor site and the receptor site on the postsynaptic membrane, which is here, increasing its effect. Okay? In other words, by blocking the serotonin reuptake, we can artificially increase the levels of serotonin by keeping it in the synapse and having it, therefore, increasing its calming effect. Okay? Okay, another drug therapy um, which you were looking at um, and we're making notes on are tricyclics. Now, tricyclics are another type of antidepressant. Okay, um, pemiprobine or the anaphronil, um, as its branded name, was the first antidepressant to be used for OCD. And this is an interesting idea because, um, as we'll see when we move into next year, looking at uh, you know concepts such as comorbidity. Um, depression and OCD overlap, okay? and often someone who suffers with OCD or depression or vice versa may have an overlap in terms of their symptoms with OCD and depression. Um, someone suffering with depression may also suffer with anxiety, okay? they're often paired together. And so we can often see that drugs that are effective for other mental disorders can also be effective um, elsewhere, okay? and this is a good example. Um, so, uh, chloroprobin is a good example, um, and it's now actually more commonly used for OCD rather than depression, okay? And the way that uh, tricyclics work is actually by blocking the transporter mechanism that, uh, that reabsorbs both serotonin and noradrenaline, okay? So, um, those of you studying biology will look at transporter proteins, and what tricyclics do is block those transporter proteins, okay? It has a similar effect to SSRIs, but the key difference, okay, the key difference between tricyclics and SSRIs is that SSRIs specifically target the reuptake of serotonin, whereas tricyclics, okay, can target more than one neurotransmitter. They block a reuptake channel, okay, which um, can be for various neurotransmitters. As a result, more of these neurotransmitters are left in the synapse, the same kind of idea as the SSRIs prolonging their activity and easing the transmission of the next impulse. Okay. So, again, trying to increase this kind of calming effect. Um, tricyclics can target more than one neurotransmitter, 
And as a result of this, actually, okay, and I'll explain this in a minute, they have more side effects uh, than SSRIs, um, and so are often only used if the SSRIs for a particular patient are not effective. So the tricyclics are almost like a, um, a second line of treatment, if you like. The reason why they have more side effects is because they are not as specific. Tricyclics will block reuptake of various neurotransmitters, okay? More than one neurotransmitter. So if you block the reuptake of more than one neurotransmitter, okay, it might be a neurotransmitter that actually you've got perfectly okay levels of. And so if you start disrupting that, then you can have side effects. And it might be things like dizziness, um, it can affect your uh, your indigestion can affect indigestion, um, make you feel nauseous as well. So various side effects can happen because of this. Okay, so drug therapy now into specifically anti-anxiety drugs. So we've got um, a different kind of um, group of treatments here. So we were looking initially at antidepressants and how they can affect OCD patients and have that overlap. We're now going to look at um, anti-anxiety drugs specifically. And a good, these include uh, what we call benzodiazepines or BZs, as we refer to, and there's lots of different types. Okay, one example, uh, you can see the picture there, you've got Valium, uh, Xanax um, are the most commonly used examples. And these are effectively, have a overall general calming effect. Uh, Valium specifically is a, is a muscle relaxing. And so the target here is to specifically have a calming and inhibitory effect. Um, to reduce those levels of anxiety. Now, of course, if we can reduce the levels of anxiety, that's tackling a really big part of OCD, okay? That worry circuit and reducing levels of anxiety. Um, these types of drugs have a calming effect by inhibiting the nervous system specifically, okay? And causing muscles to relax, okay? So specifically muscle relaxants. They work by enhancing the action um, of the chemical messenger or neurotransmitter called GABA, which acts to calm the brain activity. So GABA is just another neurotransmitter. Okay? Um, it enhances the effect of GABA by um, having a calming effect. BSAs react with GABA out, uh, sorry, on the outside of receiving neurons, and this makes it harder for neurons to be stimulated by other neurotransmitters, thus making the person feel more relaxed. It effectively reduces overstimulation. Um, and has that overall calming effect, which can then lead to reduced anxiety. And um, worth thinking about the side effects as well of, of BZs. Um, again, things like dizzy, dizziness, uh, feeling nauseous, headaches uh, can be common side effects. And it's important to note that any drug therapy okay, can have a side effect because we are all individuals okay, and we will respond to different drugs differently because we are all individually different. Um, from a biological level, um, at least. So, so that's next week. Okay, so that's that for this video. Um, definitely worth pausing the video, going back through the video, and adding any extra notes or details to your booklet. And what we want to start thinking about now, if you want to read ahead, um, is to start thinking about the evaluation here in terms of effectiveness and appropriateness. You've also got some optional tasks to do on the set work, so do have a go at those. And if you want me to check any of your work, um, if you want some individual feedback um, on the six mark question that I've sent you, then do, do send that in to me, and I'm more than happy to give you some feedback on that as well. Okay, thanks very much.